After completion of all connecting structures at the beginning of 2023, the entire tunnel was handed over to Effage by the rail operator for fit-out. Work began in the West Tube in January. The East Tube followed in April, apart from the accident area in Nidabur. Effage set up its construction site in an area of 2,500 square meters at the start of 2023 in order to fit out the two tunnel tubes. The centerpiece is the mobile, fully automatic concrete mixing plant. Around 60 cubic meters of concrete can be produced here per hour. Approximately 100,000 cubic meters of concrete will be used for the entire interior fit-out. With our plant here on the construction site, we are able to produce the concrete required for fitting out both tunnel tubes flexibly and just in time. We can thus reduce journeys on public roads to a considerable degree. At peak times, we can produce up to 600 cubic meters per day, which corresponds to the contents of around 80 concrete mixers. The various aggregates are stored in the bunkers. These aggregates reach the mixing plant via conveyor belts. The mixture consists of gravel, sand, water, cement, and flue ash. The finished concrete is then pumped to the vehicles, which drive it immediately to the installation site in the tunnel tubes. The interior fit-out started with the installation of the drainage pipe. The pipe is fixed in the ground using so-called drainage concrete. During operation, water is run through this pipeline to a pumping station at the lowest part of the tunnel and then pumped out. The invert concrete is installed in the tubes in four layers. The first layer is poured directly from the concrete mixers into the tube segments and then spread by hand. Drainage mats are installed at regular intervals on the left and the right to enable moisture to later drain into the drainage pipe. The next three layers are installed with the aid of a finisher, similar to road construction. With each layer of concrete, the level rises by 25 centimeters. The roughly one meter thick base thus created is 7.58 meters wide. I am standing on this concrete base here in the west tube. Next, the shoulders are constructed to the left and right. These are lateral walkways beside the track bed. There is one narrow strip measuring 1.40 meters and one wide strip of 2.80 meters. These form part of the safety and rescue concept in an emergency, these walkways can be used to reach the nearest connecting structure. Cable ducts, fire extinguishing water lines and extraction points are also installed in the wider lateral strip. The track bed is then constructed between the shoulders with a width of 3.40 meters. The reinforcement steel meshes and formwork for constructing the shoulders were tailor-made for the Rashta tunnel. The lateral walkways consist of successive 10-meter blocks. As the individual blocks are to be separated by press joints, initially every second block will be filled with concrete. When the first blocks have hardened, the remaining blocks between them are treated in the same way. The press joints required are created by this process of concreting in sections. Around 800 blocks will be produced for each of the two tubes. Before concreting, 20 empty pipes will be laid in the wider strip. Later, the power supply, command and control technology and communication lines will run in these cable ducts. When the wide shoulder is concreted, there will initially be a gap to the tunnel wall, in which the firefighting water line and extraction points will be installed before being filled with sand and concrete.
The shoulders will also be installed in the tunnel access troughs. In the west tube, this work will be completed by the beginning of 2024. Work will then proceed with the installation of the slab track. The fit-out of the east tube will proceed in parallel, although on a different schedule.